Hey everyone, today I wanted to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, I've been meaning to make for a while, and that is a review of the OC custom triggers that I have in two of my Glocks. I want to tell you a little bit about the company because they're still relatively new and I, you, know, you don't hear about them everywhere, so I kind of want to tell you what I've found out about them so far. I actually reached out to them um, and basically asked them, hey, you know, tell me about what you guys do and what makes you want to do it. And I actually got a pretty prompt response back. Let me go ahead and just tell you what it is they told me. Um, you know, basically they said that they are a humble company just making one trigger at a time. Uh, they started in the September of last year, which at the time they sent this would have been 2014, and they are always evolving and positioning themselves in the marketplace. They're a company that makes original custom parts at a very affordable, affordable price, which I'll discuss later. And the reason they started the company was because they like to keep their firearms as OEM as possible uh, while customizing the factory parts themselves. Basically, if they can find something to enhance, whether performance-wise or aesthetic, that's what they want to do while trying to keep the, as many factory parts in it as possible. So that's just kind of a paraphrase of uh, what they said back to me in that message. But basically, you know, they have a passion for um, enhancing the performance and aesthetics of Glocks, and so they want to use as many OEM parts as they can to produce as high a quality product as they possibly can. Now, my experience with OC Custom Triggers started in about March of last year, making it a right around 10 months or so, when I purchased my first trigger, which was for my Glock 21 here. Now, um, this was my first time breaking into the world of aftermarket triggers, so I wasn't really sure what to expect, and I, I decided to go all out and do as much as I possibly could to it, and swapped out pretty much the entire trigger system and spring system and everything else that you possibly could change. I went ahead and just did it all just to see how much of a difference it makes. One of my big concerns right off the bat was going to be the reliability issues with it, but that ended up not happening at all. Um, I've had 100% reliability once I figured out the exact spring setup and everything I need, which I'll discuss later, which led me to go ahead and pick up another trigger for my Glock 19, my Gen 4 Glock 19. Because I was so impressed by the reliability, um, I went ahead and since this is my EDC gun and also the gun that I typically use on ranges for training or instructing, I went ahead and wanted to swap out the trigger on this one as well. So I've basically been using these triggers for almost a year now. Um, I've got well over a thousand rounds uh, between the two, probably getting close to 2,000 rounds between the two, more so on my Glock 19. But before I really get into the reliability aspect or anything like that, I want to talk to you about the different features they have and the different options you get when you order through OC Custom. So let me go ahead and start with my Glock 21 since this one has the most aftermarket parts between the two. So I'll go ahead and disassemble this real quick and show you exactly how this system works. Basically in the case of my Glock 21 here, the entire trigger assembly, trigger bar, trigger housing, all the springs have all been swapped out at this point. So let me go ahead and grab my Glock tool, take this thing all the way apart just so I can actually show you each of those different components close up. I apologize if you hear my stupid annoying poodle barking in the background. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about that right now. By the way, this uh, Glock tool I actually purchased through OC Custom Triggers as well when I bought my trigger system. So go ahead and take this thing apart. If you guys need an in-depth video uh, talking about how to actually um, take apart or install the OC Custom Triggers, uh, just let me know in the comments section below and I might put together a video just for that. But it's pretty straightforward. So um, basically at this point, I'm just going to lift out the entire trigger assembly. So there's not a single part here that uh, was originally inside of my original Glock 21 there. The trigger itself, the trigger bar, the trigger housing, all the springs, and the connector are all ones that I picked up through OC Custom Triggers. Now in addition to these, I also have a upgraded Wolf Spring Kit um, inside here on my striker, as well as on the plunger there. Um, so that's also helping out as well. But anyway, as far as these components go, um, one of the things you'll notice is, and one of my favorite aspects of these triggers, is the contoured trigger safety. So, as you know, on Glocks, you have this little tiny bar in the middle that you have to depress before you can actually pull the trigger. Now, one thing you can have OC Custom Triggers do for just a little tiny added fee is basically contour that so that there's nothing sticking out into your finger. If you've spent an entire day shooting Glocks, then you've probably noticed that even when the um, 
trigger safety is all the way depressed, there's still a little bit sticking out there and that can really start to dig into your finger after a while. So that's one thing that I love that these triggers do, which is get rid of that. Another thing is if you look right up here, um, this is actually where you adjust the pre-travel of the trigger. You can make it as long or as short as you want for the most part. And the nice thing about this setup too, is you can actually adjust it while the trigger is still in the gun. So you don't have to take it out and disassemble your firearm every single time you want to make an adjustment. So you can adjust it on the fly if you need to, and I've never had an issue with it um, adjusting itself or anything like that, or accidentally turning. Um, it stayed exactly where I've put it. And just to kind of demonstrate to you that feature, let me go ahead and show you on my on my Glock 19 here. Now you do have to um, you do have to depress the trigger in order to get to it. But if you look in there, you can see that little slot where you would actually stick the provided Allen key into. So as you can also see, um, the trigger bar it, it's a little bit dirty right now, but they do a full polishing job on it. So again, it's a standard OEM trigger bar, to my knowledge, and uh, all they do is just polish it up. Now I want to mention, um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar, if you're looking into Glock triggers, the uh, little custom polish job that you can do, the 25 cent trigger job is what some people call it. I actually did that on my Glock 21 factory uh, trigger bar and trigger. And, you know, even though you can see that it's pretty well polished up, again, still a little bit smudgy for my fingers, but um, even though it's pretty well polished up, it didn't get me anywhere close to the feel that I wanted or expected from the trigger job. So uh, that's what made me ultimately decide to go with something else. Um, then back here, right under your little uh, cruciform shaped thing up there, you have a replacement spring, uh, which again, all the springs I believe are wolf springs, which then interfaces into your trigger housing, which as you can see, I also have a replacement connector, which is an optional upgrade that you can get direct from OC Custom as well. And then what you'll notice here is where that little uh, cross section mates up with the trigger housing, there's a little screw coming out. Just for a reference, this is what a standard factory one looks like out of the box, where you don't see that little screw coming out. Here you can see that screw coming out on this one. And what you have is a little set screw, which basically prevents over travel. So you can fully customize this trigger as it's configured right now for over travel and uh, pre travel. So if I can get this back in its slot, basically you can see here that that little cross section interfaces with that screw and prevents it from going back any further. So again, what that does is it eliminates the over travel or any potential over travel of your trigger. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you do decide to go with the over travel eliminator, one thing you're gonna wanna get is an armorer's back plate. Basically what it does is it takes this little end plate here and brings it up and it's bright orange so you're not gonna forget it. If you set the over travel incorrectly, to the point where you can't actually disengage that trigger or actuate that trigger, what it'll do is it'll allow you to trip that from the inside. Now there are other ways of doing it as well, uh, but that just makes it a lot easier. And again, the back plate is an, again an optional upgrade direct from OC Custom Triggers if you so choose. So essentially, because I ordered the trigger, uh, which has the over travel eliminator, or excuse me, pre-travel pre uh, adjustments, and the uh, connector, the housing, and all the springs, I essentially had a drop-in replacement trigger for my Glock 21. All I had to do is pop out the old one, assemble the new one, and then drop it right into place. And after doing some fine adjustments, I got it pretty much exactly where I want it. So let me go ahead and throw this thing back together. So basically what I have now is, you know, my fully custom trigger. Now, um, like I said, I did order the Wolf Spring Kit with it, which comes with a couple different weights of springs. Um, you know, they have... Uh, four pound, three pound, or four and a half, th I think a three and a half. What you have to do, and be sure you do this if you swap out any of the springs, function test your firearm before you start carrying it or using it in any serious capacity because I put the lightest spring that I possibly could in, which dramatically reduced the trigger pull, which was fantastic. However, what it also did was start, it started causing uh, light primer strikes because it didn't have enough force anymore to actually ignite the, the primers on the cartridges. So make sure you function test it. Um, you can start with the lightest spring if you want, but again, you might have to go up a little bit just to make sure. And again, all those different weights are going to be provided if you order the spring kit. So you'll definitely have one that works. 
So with this Glock 21, like I said, I, I ordered everything. I replaced absolutely everything and, and included the over-travel eliminator. Now with my Glock 19, I decided to uh, go against doing the over-travel eliminator and just did the regular trigger bar, did all the springs, did the connector and everything else. The only thing I didn't do was the over-travel eliminator. I wanted to see how much of a difference it made. And in my experience, it's not a whole lot. It's not an expensive upgrade if you choose to get it. But again, to me, having to fiddle around with the back plate and everything else um, was kind of more trouble than it was worth, in my opinion. Um, I don't think that there's an excessive amount of over-travel if you don't have the over-travel eliminator. But that's just me. If you decide differently, then, you know, by all means, do what you want to do. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, which you'll notice on both of these Glocks, is that little trigger safety in the middle. You have the option of uh, making it whatever color you want. Um, I, I believe both of these are... They're either FDE or OD green, I can't remember which, and it might be one of each. Um, you can get blue, you can get red, I've seen gold. Um, you know, they have a whole long list of different colors that you can choose. Uh, realistically, does that make a huge difference? No, that's just one of those aesthetic things, which, you know, if you're going to get a new trigger, why not have a little bit of an aesthetic difference? But, you know, again, that it's not going to increase the performance at all. So, you're probably wondering, okay, well, you, you've replaced all this stuff, um, how much of a difference does it actually make? Now, uh, Glocks will typ typically advertise that their trigger pull is around five and a half pounds. In my experience, at least with my uh, trigger scales, that has never been the case. Typically, they're closer to uh, seven or eight pounds, and again, in my experience. So let me go ahead and show you what both of these are pulling at now. I've already um, you know, done this a lot, so I already know what to expect as far as the trigger pull. But I'll go ahead and show you uh, so you can see for yourself. I'm just using a uh, Wheeler. This is an actual analog trigger scale. It's not you know, a fancy electronic one. But let's go ahead and see if we can't find out what the trigger pull is going to be. So make sure we get on that safety. And... Alright, so this one pulled right under 4 pounds. Um, and in my experience it pulls anywhere between 3.5 and, and 4 pounds. Then for the Glock 19, let's go and check this. All right, reset my trigger scale and throw it on here. Again, make sure I get on that safety. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain to get on that trigger safety and actually get it to actuate. So, all right, so that one was just over three and a half pounds. Now, in my opinion, for anything that I'm going to carry for any serious purpose, I don't want that trigger pull any less than three and a half pounds. Um, if you're doing competition stuff, you know, by all means, do what you want to do. Uh, it's a little bit different. You know, sometimes there will be different rules regarding what league you're in. But again, in my opinion, as far as self-defense or any serious use like, usage like that or duty use, I don't recommend anything lighter than three and a half pounds on a handgun. And that might even be a little light for some people, which I understand. So that's the actual trigger weight. Let's talk about the actual travel of these triggers. And actually, one thing I forgot that I uh, had right now, I actually have one of the suppressor-ready Glocks. Um, to my understanding, Glock will actually ship uh, Glock 19s like this with the uh, suppressor-ready barrel and the suppressor sights. Uh, and you can also see this one is sporting a Surefire XC1. Uh, so you can expect a review coming up on that shortly. But let's go ahead and test the trigger pull on this one, just so you can see uh, directly. And again, this is going to be a Gen 3 Glock 19. Uh, just for reference, let me go ahead and reset this trigger or trigger scale and try to get roughly on the same part of that trigger. Which again can sometimes be easier said than done. Alright, so uh, that one pulled right at six and a half. So again, like I said, um, factory triggers, even though they advertise five and a half pounds, aren't actually that. So at this point, I want to go ahead and talk about the actual travel to see how much of a difference the pre-travel and over-travel eliminator makes. So let me go ahead and reset and then we'll, we'll talk about this. So the way I have this set up, I basically have the tip of that uh, bottom part of the trigger lined up with a one inch mark. I'm going to use inches because America. And uh, so I'll go ahead and see where it wants to break. So the take up is all the way there. That's almost already at half an inch. And then pushing the rest of the way, uh, it looks like a, a right around one half inch total for the travel. And so what I'll do is I'll also hold that trigger and see about reset. So again, get that right back to about half an inch 
or so, and then let it out till it resets. So again, right about there, which is more or less right where we started. So about a half inch travel for this Gen 3 uh, Glock 19. So let's take a look at my um, Gen 4 Glock 19 with the OC custom trigger. Again, start it right around that one inch mark. Now the take up has pretty much already stopped at less than a quarter inch. Let me go ahead and reset that. So again, I really feel it start to stack almost immediately and then a little bit of play and then it breaks right there. So uh, not a whole lot shorter, but again, this one does not have the over travel eliminator, has an overall travel of maybe about three eighths of an inch. So really only an eighth of an inch different. But again, this is with the pre-travel eliminator or pre-travel adjustment, not the over travel eliminator. So let's take a look at my Glock 21, which does have the over travel eliminator. So again, we'll start it out right at that one inch line, more or less. And so with the over travel eliminator, that takes it to maybe just over a quarter inch. Uh, you know, you can be the judge for yourself where you see it lining up at. But um, it, so as you can tell, it does make a little bit of a difference. Now, in my opinion, that difference isn't enough to... Um, make me super worried about getting the over travel eliminator but if you're looking for the absolute um, shortest possible travel then that might be the option for you so again we got the Glock 19 yeah so maybe about an eighth of an inch different there so at this point I kinda wanna talk a little bit more about the reliability and uh, overall feel of the trigger so I'll go ahead and start with the feel of the trigger um, as you could probably tell from when I was showing you the actual tra uh, travel distances the part where it actually starts stacking up is again almost immediate but really with a any Glock trigger you can really expect for there to be a little bit of mush in there once you feel that take up but then the brake is a nice clean brake it's not quite to the level of like a 1911 brake or something like that um, but in my opinion it's more crisp than a standard factory Glock trigger um, and then as far as the reset it's a very audible and tactile reset so you're gonna know when you, once you've hit that reset point and you don't have to let the trigger out anymore and as you can see as we may or may not be able to see um, the actual trigger safety is what limits you from that pre-travel adjustment you got to make sure that it's not actually contacting the back of that frame there uh, but if you can see that moving around back there uh, I could maybe even stand and push it back just a little bit further but to me right where this thing's at um, it has su such a little pre-travel anyway that I'm not worried about adjusting that. So again, to just kind of recap the feel, it feels significantly better than a standard factory trigger, but you're not going to get that same feeling as you would with like a 1911 or something with a much more crisp trigger. But again, talking about reliability, um, when I first like got my Glock 21 uh, re retrofitted with the OC custom trigger, like I said, um, I did have an issue with light primer strikes. All I had to do was swap out the springs that I had on the striker and it became 100% reliable. To this point, I probably have between five and 600 rounds through my Glock 21 with that trigger installed and probably around uh, 12 to 1300 rounds through my Glock 19 with this trigger installed. And again, I've had 100% reliability, no issues with the trigger not wanting to reset or um, any light primer strikes or anything like that. Everything has run 100%, which is again why I trust my life to this trigger being that this is what I carry for my EDC. So now that I've hopefully sold you on the uh, validity of getting these triggers, I want to talk to you a little bit about the cost. So like I said, when I got the one for the 21, I upgraded absolutely everything. Um, everything was pretty much a drop-in uh, exchange because uh, I ordered all new parts. Even with ordering everything, including springs and everything else, my total cost was right around $120. That includes the backplate, the armor's backplate, that includes the Glock tool, that includes everything. So $120 to, to totally retrofit my Glock 21, I think is exceptionally reasonable. And then on the Glock 19, like I said, I didn't do the over travel eliminator, but I did everything else. And so that brought me to right around $90. So under $100 for what I think is an exceptional trigger, I think that's a very good value as a comparison. If you're looking at something like Zevtech, which I think is more or less the industry standard as far as aftermarket race gun stuff goes, 
their minimum cost for a replacement trigger setup is $140 and that can go up to well beyond $200 and, and up from there. So when you consider the value that you're getting for the level of quality that you're getting, I would highly, highly recommend checking out OC Custom Triggers if you're looking to change something up. Now one thing I want to say just as a caveat, if you're already an accomplished shooter, you can expect to be more accurate with a nicer trigger. However, don't get a nicer trigger if you're not a good shooter thinking that that will automatically make you a, a good shooter. You still have to learn trigger control and trigger reset and all the rest of your fundamentals in order to make full use of this trigger. A lot of times people try to buy things to make them a better shooter and unfortunately that's not the way it works so you still have to put the time and energy in. So while I highly recommend these triggers, don't buy it trying to think that it's going to be a shortcut to becoming a better shooter. So with that said, um, if you guys have any questions uh, about these triggers or about these guns themselves or about anything else, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If you guys want to see me do a full install, basically reset these back to factory and then install all the new parts that I added to it, please let me know as well. Um, I can do that for you, show you how to put it all together. As a disclaimer, you should have a qualified armor do any gunsmithing for you. But again, if you guys want to see that, please let me know and I'll go ahead and put a video together for that. But as always, I hope you were able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.